Trips tied in is one of the best offenses in Madden every single year. And in this video, we're going to show you some of the best practices that I've learned over the years for how to slow down this formation. A couple different defensive coverages. We're also going to start out by talking about why this formation is effective. If you guys are watching this video and you want to take your Madden game to the next level, make sure that you join uh, my school.com community page. I'll put a link to that down in the description. That's where you can get access to all of my offensive and defensive ebooks, both for Madden and for college football. As soon as that game drops, we're going to be having a ton of content over there for you. And just so you know, all of those ebooks will always be as up to date as possible. So by being a member for only $10, you are going to get unlimited access to all of our ebooks, no matter what year of Madden you're playing, what year of college football you're playing. You're going to have the most up to date schemes and ebooks to be able to dominate. So, again, if you want to sign up for that, that link is going to be down in the description. So, what makes Trips Tied In effective? What makes Trips Tied In effective every single year? This is something that I wanted to kind of start to do here on the channel is do a little bit more of like, deep diving into not only what is good, but why it is as good as it is. And with trips tied in, it's important whenever you're building a defense to understand what the formation does well. What are the problems that the formation causes? So I'm in the running gun trips. This is pretty much the meta trips that a lot of people are running. And we're going to just set a couple of audibles here. Uh, the first one is going to be this wide receiver screen. Um, and then we're going to have also this speed option, which is two of the best plays that are in trip setting this year. I also have verticals, PA slot corner, and then a plethora of other plays that a lot of people like to use, such as cross under, uh, tight end corner, curl flat, PA crossers, all those plays. We're going to come out in PA crossers, and I'm going to show you kind of a couple different strategies for defending this formation. Now, the way that I like to set up my coaching adjustments for trips tight end specifically, it does depend a little bit on what defense you're running. Now, we're running the dollar defense. If you guys want to get my full dollar ebook, that's on the school page. Uh, but basically, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to go into our coaching adjustments. And I think this is the best way to run dollar right now. Um, because when you're playing trips tight in, you're going to need to pinch your defensive line. The reason why is because you're going to need to be able to stop the run out of this formation. And then you're also going to simultaneously kind of need to stop the pass as well. So what I like to do here is we're just going to put the DB fire two in our audibles. If I can find it, I think I passed it up. It's like super early on. We've got spinner DB fire two. We're also going to have um, the cover three cloud. And then lastly, if you want to, you can have either this cover six or you can have the cover four. Now, I like to have just the cover six in here. I think it's easier this way. And to start out, what, the way we're going to defend trips is we're not going to use any zone drops off rip here. So we're just going to kind of leave this all on default here at the bottom. If you want to, feel free to set that 20-yard curl flat for the first style of defense. We'll also show you a match style defense that I do think is really good for defending trips. So we'll get into that a little bit later. Now our base coverage, or our base call here, is going to be free safety zone blitz. And that's the defense that we're gonna do the majority of adjusting out of. Real quick, if you're in regs, make sure you have safeties at linebacker. If you're in mutt, you just need lurk artist linebackers here. And really you want lurk artists everywhere that you can get a lurk artist. Uh, lurk artist is the best ability in the game in my opinion. Okay, so with that in mind, free safety zone blitz, and let's talk about what trips tight end does well. Now, our base setup for this right here is we're going to press and pinch our D-line. That is kind of the base alignment that we're going to be coming out in every single play, and I want to explain why trips tight end gives this alignment specifically issues and really defenses in general. So if you take a look at this formation, you have three receivers to the left side. And most of the time, a good trip side end player is going to call their trips to the wide side of the field. The reason they're going to call their trips to the wide side of the field is because it is going to allow them to attack both sidelines with their routes. One of the big principles for defending trip side end, and this has been true as long as I have been playing Madden, is you want to try to force them to throw the ball to the middle of the field, which is where your user is going to be. And most importantly, you want to make sure that you can cover this tight end side really with two zones and your user. So if we just kind of look at this for just a second, I'm gonna put my user over here. What we wanna do is really cover this right side well, basically with this seam flat and third. And I'm gonna talk about how we can do that in just a minute. Everything else 
is going to be able to move over to this side. If you look at all of these defenders that we have the ability to put into coverage here to the left side, it is one, two, three, four, and potentially even five or six. So that is super important. Now, another thing that Trips Tight End does well, which is something that we really need to kind of talk about, is it has a really good running game. Actually, it's probably got one of the best shotgun run games in the entire game. This is the purpose of pinching our defensive line because if we're not careful, they'll run inside zone on us all day long. We have to be able to shoot this run or at least be able to contain the, the inside zone and the counter. And in running gun, you actually have to be able to also defend this speed option. Now what makes this speed option really good is in Madden you can journal and then pitch it. And as you can see there, he actually played it really well, but in some formations, and let me explain what I'm getting at here with a different alignment. So let's say that we were to come out and the defense was gonna look something like this right here. Okay, so while this defense does look kind of decent because it gives us an advantage over here to the left side, we get a better alignment on that trip side specifically, the thing that really it costs us is it costs us in this speed option. What you're gonna see now is now it's a lot easier to manipulate that one defender and now you're isolating kind of that tight end side. So trips tight end is a really difficult formation to defend because they have numbers on both sides depending on how you line up. There are some really good defenses when we're bas basically lined up like what you see here out of dollar. For example, one of the things that we could do is, I think you can option quarterback here or just man this guy up onto the running back. And oftentimes what you'll see is if I were to run, whoops, I didn't, I, sorry, I forgot to call speed option. But oftentimes you'll see that if I do call speed option, then I'll have a potential ability to stop that. So again, we'll just do this man line will option the running back and will actually man this guy up on the running back. And I'll talk about why you would do that in just a minute, why that actually makes sense beyond just the speed option. But essentially here, you'll see if I try to run this, a lot of times they are able to still at least stay a little bit more outside and hold a contain. But as you can see, the speed option causes problems. So what can I do with my user in order to uh, defend that out of that alignment? One other thing I wanted to cover is you can go take the running back. So essentially, you're going to option the quarterback. So you're always gonna play the quarterback here, uh, which you might even wanna do in your coaching adjustments. And then essentially what you're gonna do with your user is you're gonna run out here, take that running back away, and then you let your formation take the quarterback away. Now, obviously this is easier said than done, but the bottom line is trips tied in causes you issues whenever you start to put a defense on the field, it looks like this, because as you can see here, this limits what we can call to the right side of the screen, okay? Because we can't really play a cover three coverage because this is my user defender, right? So if I play a cover three coverage, then this is what a lot of players are gonna do. They are gonna run a simple high low over here to the right side, and they're basically gonna read your user. A lot of times what's gonna happen is your user is gonna rise up to go and defend the tight end, and then they're going to throw the running back. So let me kind of illustrate that. I'll have to put some coverages on here. But basically, you're going to go guard the tight end. And then what you're going to see here is that this running back is going to get open in the flat, right? So those are some challenges to trips tight end. It really is the alignment. And it's the fact that if you are base aligned, which I believe is probably the best, the most balanced way to be able to defend this formation, while this is going to give you more resources to defend the right side of the formation, now, as you can see, they do still have numbers to the left because you only have one stock corner over here and they have two receivers. So you're gonna get a lot of manipulation uh, and, and that could look a variety of different ways. But one of the main ways that that is gonna look like over here on the left side is with the use of the play verticals or something similar where they're gonna really be able to attack with this middle trips receiver because as you can see, that slot corner is really not defending either one of them, right? So. Another really important thing to talk about when we talk about defending a formation is understanding who are the problem, I call them the problem childs, who are the problem players? Who, who, what are the, if there was one receiver that you could take away from the formation and would instantly make defense a thousand times easier, what would that be? Why and why is that the case? If you think about trips tight end in general, this inside trips receiver is really the main player that's going to cause you problems to both sides so he's going to be on corner routes he's going to be on deep crossing routes he's going to be on underneath little slant routes right he's one of the main players that we have to kind of think about if they were to run a combo like this 
he's going to be the one that's on the post. See what I'm saying? Very rarely. And it, and, and I will say this year in trips, you do see a little bit more of a setup like this being kind of problematic. But generally speaking, the inside trips receiver is the main receiver that you have to worry about on crossers and corners. Okay? So we want to try to neutralize him. The other player that I would say is kind of super important to think through with is with the tight end. That tight end is either going to be on a tight end apprentice post uh, or a tight end apprentice corner. Majority of the time, occasionally on a clear out streak, but generally these are the two routes that you're going to need to be prepared to defend. Okay? So all of that to say, how do we defend trips? My favorite base coverage, I'm going to explain why this is so good, is we are going to utilize this free safety zone blitz, but what we're going to do here is we are going to outside quarter this right side corner. And the reason why, I'm going to show you what this adjustment's going to do. Now, uh, we'll talk about the rest of the adjustments here in just a minute, but I just want to show you this base adjustment. What this base aligned quarter is going to do is I don't care what crossing route they run from that left side, this, this crossing route will never get open. As you see here, that quarter is going to always, always, always play that deep sideline, that quarter. Now, occasionally and situationally, we can very well play cover two. Like if we wanted to send a, a, um, a cover two blitz on that left side, maybe we wanted to do a defense like this, which I do think is actually a really good defense for trips. Now, this, this coverage is kind of a baity coverage because what they're going to be used to do, being able to do is essentially high-low that, that defender, right? Well, now you're going to call cover two, and they're not going to really be able to high-low the defender, and then you're going to scream at them, and you're also going to simultaneously stop every bomb they can do from the trip side with that deep half or even an inside quarter, depending on how you kind of structure your coverage. So my first and favorite adjustment, and this has been true of trips for a very long time, is a baseline press outside quarter on that tight inside. Normally, especially if you shade outside, is going to do a really good job of defending two routes that are really problematic. The first route is going to be that deep crosser. The second route is going to be the tight end apprentice short corner route from vertical. So you'll see here that quarter is going to play it pretty good, especially with the KO ability that is normally going to be defended. So how are they going to manipulate that coverage? Well, the main thing they're going to do to manipulate you on the right side of the field is they are going to try to throw their running back on a streak, and they're going to essentially hold your user. So the way this would work would be something like what you see here, and what's my user responsibility? My user is going to, practically speaking, play more like a hook curl defender. So if I see this running back go up on a streak, I can just take this, and then I can kind of roll back once the deep zones are able to defend it. So some, a couple of my favorite, favorite, favorite adjustments for trips tight in, at least to start off, is I really like go ahead and use a quarter. I also do like a curl flat. I really do like this curl flat here. The reason why is because that curl flat will defend the slant route on the backside, and I'll show kind of what that would look like. So let's say that they're running kind of this slant type route, like slant post. Watch this curl flat defender. A lot of times you see here, he'll back up, back up, back up. And if he has flat zone KO, he'll actually knock that out. Now, I put my curl flats on 20, so just keep that in mind. Another thing you could do to kind of get at the same thing uh, would be to shade up on a hard flat and then make it that into a cloud. And then from there, this cloud flat would also still do a decent enough job. You'll see here, like even if they throw that right there, that's like five yards, right? You're just going to rally and tackle that ball carrier. So the main adjustment that I like to do for trips, at least for the beginning here, is I love to outside quarter and flat zone this, this defender. And if you take your curl flats and put them back on, actually do that so that I can show this to you. If you just leave these on default, I think that's probably the best strategy until they force you to set zone drops. Ultimately, a trip side end player, a good trip side end player probably will force you to set zone drops. But essentially what you'll see is you could even leave this seam flat let me show you something underrated that this seam flat can do. So if we don't shade or do anything, this seam flat, let's say that they run like a tight end apprentice corner and then they run the running back on a streak or something. Uh, actually, let's do something like, like, like a streak, yeah. Watch the seam flat. You'll see the seam flat actually gets a lot of more depth and he'll delay that tight end corner route. And then as you see, that gives that quarter an opportunity to be able to intercept the ball. 
So that's something else that I like to do. But the main thing here is outside quarter on this right side. Now our zone coverage is on default. The reason our zone coverage is on default, the reason why it's important that our zone coverage is on default is so that on this right hand side here, what we can do is the main thing that can kill you is a cover three bomb over the middle of the field. And let me explain kind of kind of what that would look like. So if they were to set up a cover three bomb or cover four bomb, it really bombs cover three better than cover four. It would basically be this right here with a little check down. So what you'll see is this crosser is gonna kind of get right into this little alley. And a lot of times it's a touchdown. So the way that I like to combat that is through the utilization of a, a hybrid, co hybrid coverage. So what we're going to do is we're going to run cover four on that right side. So you see we inside quarter this guy. Now this is a, a, a zone, a, a default zone inside quarter. What this default zone inside quarter will do is he will play this crosser when he comes across. As you see right there, he's able to tackle. Now also your user could e just as easy take him if you wanted to. The problem is if your user does take him, there's nobody underneath in the middle of the field. So a couple different decisions that you would have to make, in my opinion. But another one of the most common, 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 common trips tight end combos is they will take the left side slot, uh, that, that middle slot, and that's going to be verticals. So the way we stop verticals is we want to man him up with that safety. All right. So you see here, this is kind of what we're walking into but we have this basic coverage. And what I love about this coverage, as simple as it is, you're never gonna get bombed. Really, it's hard to bomb this coverage, I would say, because you can inside quarter this guy because you're using these man ups, okay? Because you're using these man ups. You can inside quarter that guy on the left side. And then if you wanted to deep half, you could deep half that guy on the outside if you wanted to. Um, if you wanted to, another thing you could do is you could go with a maximum coverage setup and really run the defense more like this. The reason this is good is because if the tight end goes underneath on a drag route, you don't have to defend him. Um, if they put the running, you know, some, anything like that, you don't have to really defend that. So, and this is a very popular combo. So you see how this little inside hard flat is gonna do a really good job of taking away that tight end coming across underneath. That's an option for you as well. So you have a couple different things that you can, you can do here. But in general, the reason I like this coverage is just because it takes away verticals. It takes away a lot of the like quick hitting combos that trips players like to call. And I think this is one of the best base coverages in the game. And again, if you want to send five here or four, you can easily send that linebacker. And you see, I mean, we're able to take away a lot of things. Now, the next defense that I'm going to be go over, going over for trips tight end is a cross man defense that I really like. And the reason I like this defense is because essentially we're gonna put our user on an island, but it's gonna be kind of strategic in terms of how we're gonna do this. So we're still gonna come out, we're gonna press, we're gonna pinch our D-line, but one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna start to kind of change some things up. So the, the main thing that we're gonna change up here is we are gonna, instead of playing that quarter, because eventually they're gonna get used to that, we're actually gonna play a cover two coverage, like a vert hook and a cloud. So we're gonna leave our user on an island here up the middle. Now we're gonna leave this middle third. And the reason we're gonna leave this middle third is because one of the most popular route combinations is gonna be something like this. And what you'll see is that this middle third is gonna play, it'll play this tight end corner or this tight end, this tight end route. So you're able to play the tight end route. You could also, if you don't wanna utilize the middle third, feel free to utilize that quarter. So again, it looks like this. So what is this coverage on the, just talking about the right side, what is this coverage going to be really, really good at defending? Well, this coverage is going to be really good at defending that route combination we were talking about, something like this, okay? And the reason this is going to be really good at defending this is because your user is going to be able to go to that deep in route because the vertical hook, as you'll see right here, is going to do a really good job of taking away that running back. And then the other thing that this is going to do a really good job of defending is any kind of tight end corner route. So if they're running a lot of corner routes, this is one of my favorite uh, coverages. Now, please notice that we're making everything look exactly the same. This is one of the biggest principles I could give you for defense is you want to make everything look the same. You want your maximum pressure defenses to look just like your maximum coverage defenses. That is super, super, super important. 
Now let's talk about the, the trip side of the formation and what we're going to do. So the primary purpose of this defense is we have this vertical hook and this cloud flat. So we don't have to use her the underneath middle of the field because we have this vertical hook taking away any slant route, any crossing route late. It's going to do a really good job. So what I like to do here uh, as far as the coverage goes is I really like to try to flood the coverage, if you will, to the right side. So the way we're going to do that, this, is, this would be where I would want to have a 30-yard cloud flat, or a, not a 30-yard cloud flat, but a, a, a purple. So we would go with a hard flat, a curl flat, and a hook curl. And essentially, we're going to mabel this, this trip side. Now, the one big key I will say is when I do this, I almost always deep half this guy. Another way to get to the same basic thing here would be to run your coverage, you know, essentially like this where we're double flatting and what's our user responsibility here so we're not going to really give up anything to the left side um, you know they're going to have to have just a really good throw the main thing we have to be worried about here is any crosser from the trip side whether it comes from the middle trips or the inside trips so we're going to go basically to the crosser and then we have this yellow zone underneath that has a mid zone ko typically and he's going to have a potential to stop that route so that's another one of my favorite coverage adjustments in terms of defending trips. Ultimately, the biggest thing with trips is understanding where to force the routes to go, okay? Whenever you are a whenever you're playing defense, you cannot typically you cannot take everything away. And to to illustrate this just briefly, I want to explain a basic coverage such as a drop 8 cover 4. So a drop eight cover four would basically look kind of like this. And this is one of the best defenses for trips. Why is this good? Because it forces them to throw corner routes on the trip side as the primary means in which they are going to beat this coverage, right? Because ultimately this guy is going to go out to the flat. This guy is going to go kind of between the hash mark and the numbers. Your user is you know, able to use her kind of over here. And then also, you know, essentially from hash mark to numbers, kind of right in here, same type thing over here. And again, this is never going to give up a crossing routing in trips. And then this guy is going to protect against anything deep. And really you could do all kinds of stuff on this back end of here. Like let's say you wanted to do quarter, quarter, half, and then even ultimately, uh, you know, ultimately back this guy up on a cloud. You know, this is, this is essentially what I'm trying to show you here is I'm just trying to show you the, the, the distribution of zones. So where are they actually, what is the space that they're going to take away? So as you see here, this is a pretty good defense. But if you look at this coverage real quick with me, what is the main area that you can stress? Well, typically, and I'll show you kind of what this looks like in real time. I'll actually give you a coverage setup for this. 35, and then you can go with your base coverage here. This is a really good trips defense. And it's really good specifically for a lot of the main sideline style trips combos. You can get to this by just calling cover six. Um, well, I actually probably would call it cover six, but I would flip the play. And then you would just press, pinch your D line, crash down, blitz your user. Now, really important, you want to back off this, this player here. Uh, and if he ever does that, you just have to baseline twice, and he'll normally go back. This is a really good trips defense. The reason this is such a good defense is because we got that inside quarter kind of protecting against anything deep. We have the deep half and protecting that sideline. It also has some matching principles where he'll take that post to the post. You have this outside quarter. We talked about why that was so good earlier. And then you have these two underneath flat zones. So where is the void? The void is going to be to get the user, if you, if you will, they're going to try to get the user to kind of sit over here and then throw in behind it. So the best way that this is going to happen is if they go to a route combination, which is very popular out of Bill's trips, and also this one as well, like this. So my user has to go guard the running back, and then you'll see here that this back end space is going to open up. So my point in saying that is every defense, while this is a very good trips D, it's not a bulletproof, uh, a bulletproof trips D, right? And again, it would look something like what you see here. Oftentimes, another thing that I like to do is vert hook this guy so that I have an additional player in coverage over here. You know, but again, this is one of my favorite uh, kind of trip style defenses just because this is going to do a really good job. It takes everything away to the left. So 
Any corner route to the left side, completely dead. If they do run, like let's say they run like this combo, this is also going to be pretty bagged because you'll see, see how that crosser is going to get bagged by that inside quarter, and then the user is going to kind of be able to rally underneath. So that's one of my, another really, really good trips defense. Another thing that I like to tell people that I do think is super important when you're playing trips tight end, trips tight end historically has really struggled with cross manning. Cross manning key players, which is kind of what we talked about in the first setup that I like to do defensively. But we're going to do a little bit of a different version. This is going to be a send five out of a DB fire two. So all we're going to do, we're going to pinch our D line, crash out. Now, if we think about it, what are the ways in which they're going to attack us typically? The best method, in my opinion, for defending trips uh, when we want to start to utilize some cross manning is to understand really where the vulnerabilities are. So what I like to do here is essentially we're going to put ourselves on an island with the tight end. And the, what, what this is going to look like here is we're going to man up. We're going to leave these, uh, these, these uh, cloud flats, these cloud zones and stuff. So we're going to man up this safety on the outside trips receiver. We're going to man up the middle linebacker on the middle trips receiver. And then we're going to cross man that right side safety onto the inside trips receiver. Now from there, a couple different decisions that you can make. You can either leave this soft squat, which will defend the tight end corner out. It'll defend the running back to the flat. I like the cloud on the trip side because that's going to do a really good job of defending like slant post. But in general, we're on an island on the tight end. So if we get a route combo like this, what we're going to typically do here is we're going to use that tight end up, and then we're going to kind of smack back down and force him to throw into that cloud flat. But this is one of my favorite coverages for trips tight end just because of its ability to be able to stop slant post pretty well, and it just funnels them into having to throw the ball over the middle of the field, and it looks just like zone. So they're going to set up a zone combo, but we're actually running man-to-man. -man. Now, another thing on that cross manning that I did want to quickly point out to you is understand, like, this is one of the best ways to defend trips because the receivers on the left side, they're really good against press man normally. They're not the greatest, especially the – so if, if you do call man coverage, who are they going to attack with? Typically, if you call man coverage, they're going to attack with the tight end, the inside trips receiver, and the running back. So those are the main players that we need to be able to defend. So the easy way to defend that, to me, is through utilizing a vert hook, right, like a cover two on the right side. So if the, everything to the right side is pretty much dead. And then on the left side here, we're able to, you know, one of my other favorite ones is to man up this guy on the triangle receiver. When they see that, they will almost always try to throw to that solo receiver. And my strategy is I'm going to put that guy in a scissor. So we're scissoring that right side. And then from there, there's a couple different variations of things we can do. What I like to do most is a vertical hook and then a cross man onto the inside trips receiver. As you can see, the reason I like this coverage defense is because Basically, again, I'm on an island with the tight end across. If the tight end goes across, I got to guard him. But if the tight end goes on a streak, if the tight end goes to the corner, if the tight end goes to the flat, I don't have to guard him. So a lot of times we get verticals with the running back taxes. So if you look at this coverage, where do I actually have to really cover? You know, I really don't have to cover anywhere. So you'll see here, oh, I'm going to release him to the corner. I could take this back across. And you see that deep half on the right side because there's no clear out streak. It's going to do a really good job of defending that. So that's another one of my favorite little ways to defend trips tight end. Now, hopefully, you know, you've seen some really good ways in which we utilize base align. I wanted to spend a few minutes here talking about how we can utilize man ups to defend trips. And the main reason why is because a lot of people are utilizing this wide receiver screen. I'll explain a little bit about what this does. But for the auto alignment portion of this, we're going to be on default. You could even go on to man align for this. We're still going to keep auto flip off. And we are going to be, uh, the main thing here is our zone coverage is going to be on match. We're still going to be in the free safety zone blitz or the double safety defense. So as you can see, this is what this looks like. So what I like to do is just, I like to man align out of this right here. So let me show you what it looked like if I came out 
in free safety zone blitz man aligned so that you can kind of get a picture of what this does against trips tied in. So everything that we talked about originally is going to be true. We're just going to get that alignment we talked about where you see that this is a really advantageous alignment for dollar. You can do this out of cover two. You can do this out of free safety zone blitz. As long as the slot corners are not blitzing, this is a really good alignment for trips. We just have to be aware of the speed option. Now, the thing that's going to happen uh, with wide receiver screen, and I'm just going to, you know, I don't think I can show this in practice mode, but basically what's going to happen, yeah, I don't think I can show it because I can't hot route practice mode on a screen. In a game mode, essentially what's going to happen is all of your underneath zones, so that's your cloud flats, your purples, your vert hooks, if they run this properly, if they run the, run the wide receiver screen properly, they're going to blitz down. So the best way to defend this, and it is a little bit of a rollout tactic, is to play man coverage or match coverage, which is what leads me to show you this defense. So essentially what this, this is going to do, again, this, just imagine this is the wide receiver screen, and they're creating this with their hot routes. They're going to do one of two things. Most of the time, it's either going to be a streak of the running back in a corner to the tight end, or the second thing, because, again, they don't have that deeper corner, which is really important. They don't have that deeper corner. Um, the second thing you're going to get is a rollout crosser or a rollout corner, so it would be a rollout crosser right or a rollout corner left, okay? That's the main thing that you're going to get here. So what we like to do in terms of defending this is we are going to basically use a trick called quarter man quarter. So what we're going to do on that outside is we're going to put him on an outside quarter on that outside corner. This is going to institute a match coverage, and that outside quarter is going to play match everywhere that number one receiver goes, provided they do not motion out of trips. If they motion out of trips, then you need to check into something else, okay? So we have that quarter there. The next thing we're going to be able to do is we are going to be able to inside quarter, uh, or I'm sorry, man up the slot corner that is over the top of that number two receiver. He cannot really be matched super well in this formation, so we're going to utilize a man up to take him away. And then the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to inside quarter that that uh, safety, and you see that he is going – now what his job is going to be is he is going to match everywhere that number three receiver goes and play him really, really well. What this does is it leaves the only player on the field that can really kill us in terms of routes to be the tight end. Now the thing I, the thing I said that I want to remind you of – it only blitzes your underneath zones. So by still keeping this outside quarter or outside third, to me, that is a significant advantage that we want to be able to have. And then what I like to do here to the right side, even if, even if you play cover two to the right, you can certainly do that. And then you can uh, basically run your free safety blitz and blitz this guy off the right side. So you see kind of this is, this is the defense that I really like. Um, it's a really aggressive. It's going to force a rollout to the left. So I like to contain and – basically re-blitz that guy on the on the left side. So he's going to roll out to the right almost every time here. And essentially what's going to happen is if they try to throw this corner route, you'll see the match coverage will take that away. So the match coverage will take away a corner. It'll take away a crosser. It literally basically just negates. What I like about this defense, and you don't have to be man aligned. So like let's say you wanted to be in this alignment right here, perfectly fine. Even if you wanted to technically be in base alignment, the biggest thing is if you're in base alignment, I would really suggest backing this guy off on the left, and it would basically be um, quarter. What I would probably do if I was in your shoes here is I would probably cross man the running back or the, the middle linebacker onto that guy on the left. Then I would inside quarter the safety. And then now what we can do here is we can blitz basically out of a DB fire look, and you see that we have basically everything accounted for. And again, that cloud flat on the right is going to blitz, but it's not going to blitz immediately. It's going to blitz upon a rollout. And so what that's going to do is if they do roll out, this is going to allow, we're going to get a nice contain from the slot corners, and we can take that tight end to the running back. Everything else is going to be matched up super, super well. So those are some of my favorite, favorite techniques for defending trips tight end. Again, the biggest thing here is understanding why the offense is actually effective. The main thing that is super effective out of trips tied in is its ability to be able to cause mismatches on both sides of the formation 
honestly, the biggest thing that trips tight end does is it provides a really advantageous alignment for the offense. Where trips tight end struggles, the biggest weakness of trips tight end has universally been, number one, its ability to pick up blitzes off the left, and number two, its ability to consistently beat cross-man type of defenses where you're able to funnel the routes to be thrown into the middle of the field, which is going to be where your user is going to be. So as long as you take away kind of that deep right sideline and then you use cross-manning to take away some of the other windows, you're going to have a lot of success.